everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. And hey, you wanna have some simple and easy fun today with an envelope and a little bit of fabric. You can make a little cutie boo like this to tuck into your junk journals. It can also be glued onto a page or added on top of your journal for extra goodie storage. Uh, very fun to make, very easy to make, and we use very basic things to make it. And no sew. I know, right? Okay. So, um, this is the prototype, and it has a, yes, that is the African Grey Hollywood. He is dandy, and also the loveys are in backup singing for him today, so all is well. Sunny is good. He's sleeping on the mat beside me. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> this is a, um, a quilting uh, fabric that I used. Um, I think it was probably a 12 by 12 or something like that when I started, because I wasn't quite sure what size to grab, but I just grabbed a bigger piece, something that would accommodate uh, this project, and this works great. I decorated it with a, a little bit of vintage lace, a little bling there in the center. I inked around and I tucked in some lovely little accessories here to, for somebody to explore. And a nice thing that you can do um, so that your things don't fall out of the way you display them in your project is uh, just paper clip them together um, down below inside the envelopes or pockets and then they will stay in that uh, formation. How nice is that? Yes, we're getting great applause from the birds around the corner. Yes, everybody agrees. Definitely do that. Definitely do that. Okay, so here we go. This is a very easy concept and you may already have some of these things um, at home. Okay, so the first thing I started with was a very simple, plain envelope. Any envelope will do. This is probably one gotten from the Dollar Tree at some point in the uh, um, box of, I don't know, 40 or 100, whatever they used to come in. <laughs> and um, But the whole idea is we're going to not only use our envelope as the template, so we don't have to have any fancy envelope cutters or anything like that, um, but we're also going to use it in the construction of our project and that makes it uh, easy to construct. Now I'm going to demonstrate how it's probably not that easy. Um, it actually, it is easy. The hardest part of this project is just getting this flap separated from the uh, rest of the envelope. So what you want to do is kind of come along here and tease these apart. Usually they're not glued too strongly, but I would grab the top piece because you want the bulk of whatever it is to come with that and not stay on here. You don't want this piece to be thinner. It doesn't matter in the end because it's going to be covered. So know that if you get a little tear or a little uh, hole, it's still okay because we're just going for the general shape. And what we're going to do, okay, I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to pull close to um, where I'm pulling. So I take most of the paper with me on this flap. Now this may or may not go as planned. That's okay. Like I said, we're going to cover it. So that'll That'll take care of most of our foibles. Yes, yes, Holly, yes. <laughs> okay, so I have a little frayage here. So I'm just gonna come here and just trim this off. Not really 100% necessary, but it's just for completeness. There we go. Okay, so now it opens up like that. Let me back up just a little bit. You can see everything that's going on. Okay, so we have that like that, and we're just remembering the arms come in and then bottoms up, okay? Arms come in and then bottoms up. And if you forget, you just look like, you look at the glue remnants and glue trails, you can see that this is here first. It's got glue and that glue's on top. So if you forget and you do it like that, it's still okay. It's still gonna be an envelope. It's just not gonna look like a traditional envelope and that's okay too. But arms in, bottoms up. That's the traditional way. Okay, so yes, today I'm actually going to pull out my glue mat feeling all organized crafter today. And I'm gonna grab my good old Scotch Create glue stick. Um, it's, a, it's a nice glue stick for this project because we're gonna work with fabric and with paper. And for light fabric to paper projects, this works very well. You can use pretty much any glue in this um, uh, instance, but it's, this is going to wet your paper the least and uh, no wrinkling, buckling, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna go along. This is a chubby glue stick too. Um, okay, and any, any glue stick will work here. And this is the nice thing is uh, you don't have to sew this project. Um, but on the other one, I don't know if I showed you, but I did some faux sewing um, around here and here and on the inside and some stamping 
just to give it that sewn look since I was working with fabric. Just something fun to consider. Not mandatory, but just, you know, you can play with it. I did some around there too. Okay. All right. So now you do want to work relatively quickly because the glue stick will dry. Um, but it's not like an emergency or anything. You can always apply more, but just make sure you go to the edges. That's very important. So we're gluing the back of the envelope. Okay. This is the back of the envelope. And then we're going to come along <coughs> with a piece of fabric. And let me back up. Um, this is the fabric that I chose. Yes, it's wrinkled. I probably coffee dyed it or tea dyed it at some point, but um, I'm just going to go ahead. Thinner, thinner is probably better in this case. And we're just going to make sure we cover the entire envelope. And the nice thing about the glue stick is if you have a wrinkle or two, it's going to give you a second to reposition and replace and get those wrinkles out. So really no ironing is, is, is really needed. You can go ahead and iron your fabric ahead of time. Um, but uh, it's not absolutely mandatory if you do the, uh, the fabric tug as so. Okay. So that's pretty good. It's not bad. We might have a wrinkle or two, but not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Let's flip it over and see what we have. Okay. So we have this. So now all we're going to do is cut it out. I found, um, but I think the easiest way to cut it out is we're going to follow the basic lines and then come in and uh, fussy trim. So I'm just using some fabric scissors here. It's probably a good idea for this tiny little project. Where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? Oh no, no glasses. Okay, that's okay. Just go for it, Pam. All right, so I'm going to follow the straight line, follow the straight line, and then come off. Okay, that's my theory. This is to do minimal cutting, trying to be as close, but without cutting the envelope. Yeah, if a little cut happens, it's okay. All right. And then same thing along this way. And this is just our basic shape. Our basic shape. We're just cutting out here. Okay. There we go. We've got a piece we can save and use that for other things on another day. And here we go. Trimming along. Hope your day is dandy. Hope you're having fun. Hope you're feeling creative and got itchy paper fingers so you can't wait to make something and, and dive into your papers and forget about the rest of the world. Yay! Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Don't worry, that world will be waiting for you when you're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. And just get that basic thing cut out. Okay, so now... You can come in, you can either come in with your big scissors and do some uh, closer trimming. Go a little closer. And. Or you can switch over to some fussy cutting scissors, which is not a bad idea. I find that easier, especially with little areas like that. You know, you want to come in and, and gingerly follow the edge, but not cut into the paper. This is, this is a complete shot in the dark without my uh, glasses on. But I made the other one without my glasses. So there you go. There. So what, for what it's worth, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, I got that little piece right there. Okay. And uh, these are great little scissors if you have um, cans get tired from cutting a lot or you really have those tiny things to get into. These are the Fiskar E. I think they're called Easy Action. I love these scissors. You see, you'll see a lot of crafters use them because they're... They're so easy on the hands and you can get into these tiny little spaces and you can just snip all the excess away. And did we get it all? Did we get it all? That's all right. Almost done. <clears throat> this project comes together pretty, pretty quickly. And I just think they're so darn cute. And you can, you can, you can take old clothes and make these things. You can take bed sheets. You can take quilting fabric. You can do a lot of things. Okay, let's back up a little bit so we can see everything that's going on. Okay, so now we have our basic shape. I'm just checking for any wrinkles that need to be. Uh, do I need to round? I feel like there was one area here. I'm going to follow the round of this edge just to give it that <clears throat> that typical envelope look. Okay. All right. So now um, we can do, it's probably easiest to decorate your inside. What's going to show? Remember arms and then bottoms up. So if you kind of refold it, see what you're working with. You can see that this area is open. Now you don't have to decorate that, but you can. And um, let me just show you again how I decorated it for the example. 
Yes, I did some inking and some rubber stamping. So maybe we'll do something like that. It's quick and easy. And it's also flat, which um, allows you easily to be able to clip this onto a journal page or add it to your journal creation somehow, way, shape, or form. All right, so, um, okay, that time I rubber stamped. Maybe this time I'm gonna stencil. Okay, let me try a stencil. <coughs> I have a million of them here. Why don't I just grab something I haven't used yet? Okay, I'm going deep. I'm digging in the stencil realm. Um, okay, that's pretty. All right, doesn't take long. It'd be nice if I washed my stencils off. I can see that there's modeling paste all over the stencil. And you don't want to do that because that leaves a rough surface. And um, it's, it's that modeling paste can really stick on there. Don't, don't do that to yourself. Get it off. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take... Boy, we've got a lot of action going on in the other room today. That's right. Action, smaction. All right, maybe I'm going to, what is this? Is this a neutral color? Maybe I'm gonna come with a green. I haven't done a green in a long time. Maybe I'll make a green little bird. All right, here we go. Let's make a green little bird. What is this? This is peeled paint. Maybe we could make a multicolored bird. That would be fun too. Okay, I'm going to use this paddle brush. You can get these makeup or craft areas. Um, you can, I, I think I originally bought mine in um, TJ Maxx. Okay, let's try that. Now, where's his nose gonna show? Okay, he might have to come off the edges a little bit. Okay. Well, I guess you're just a green bird. I didn't really add much other color, did I? Well, I do, I got this new color. Okay, let's try and add a little bit of that. Oh boy, it's gonna dirty it. Oh well, that's what we do when we're crafters. We sometimes cross pollinate. And I put some pink in there a little bit, give them some different colors. All right, let's see what we have so far. Oh, that's very pretty already, right? Okay, so let's just give a visual of where he's gonna be. Okay, well, he lost his nose. Okay, but that's fine. Um, maybe we wanna put some butterflies here? Okay, maybe maybe we'll do some brown butterflies. Where's the, where's the brown? Here it is. Okay, well, I do wanna come in with that. Okay, here, I'm back with this. This is walnut stain oxide. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna give it a go. Maybe just some, okay. Holly says it's okay, so we can do it. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I'll do some coming down this way. Oh, very pretty. Okay, so now I think I am going to ink up the edges a little bit. What would be a very pretty color? Um, maybe we could do, um, should we do green to kind of bring out the green? We, we can always do brown, but maybe we'll do brown. Okay, we'll do brown. Um, okay, I'm grabbing this dabber and my Distress Oxide, because that's the one I found. So here it is, and I'm rubbing. <laughs> this is rubbing. Okay, now, now you do have where the glue is from the um, envelope that might repel a little bit. So um, just kind of know that if you want to mist something over it to seal it, that's fine. But I think it's I think it's going to be fine. Some things won't take though; it might repel off. Just be prepared for that. And you can always cover it with uh, fabric or uh, lace or something like that. That would be cute. Okay, we don't need to do that because that is going to be closed, right? So we won't do any unnecessaries. But here, there is a back fold. I think I'm going to emphasize the back fold. You don't have to do this, but it's an option, just for a quick little excitement there. Okay, that's kind of cool, right? And uh, okay, so this is going to be like this and and like that. No, no. Arms, bottom, arms, bottom. There we go, arms, bottom. And let's flip it over. And I think I'm going to ink around the edges of this. And if you see a little area that has come loose, you can always come in there with a little more um, glue, a little more um, scotch create glue stick, or you could add Fabrifix or something like that, or white glue. Um, Another little sneaky trick is you can, if your fabric's super wrinkly and you want to get the wrinkles out, but you don't really feel like ironing, just mist it with a little bit of water and then flatten it out and stretch it out. And that'll take care of most issues. Okay, I don't think I need to do all this, but we'll do it because I, just in case. Now this one I definitely need to do because bottoms up is last, so this shows. All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, envelopes are your templates. And they can actually be used right in the construction. So this is an easy way to make a really cool, adorable little cute fabric envelope that can be used for so many things. It could be used as an invitation or happy mail or all sorts of fun things. You know, I mean, we just, we have our ways, don't we? We crafters, we just do crazy things and off we go. You know, we get an idea in our head. Next thing you know, we're off and running. There we go, down the rabbit trail. 
Oh, I got to try that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and those are the best days, aren't they? They really are. Yeah, I agree. Um, nothing more fun than something burning a hole in your creative mind, and you just can't wait to give it a go. Um, so maybe you've got some old envelopes sitting around from greeting cards or um, maybe your last trip to the Dollar Tree when you bought a box. And you're like, oh, I don't know what to use them for. I'm kind of, I've got all these envelopes. What am I going to do? Here you go. Here you can make some of these. These are really cute. These would be really nice for gifts. Wouldn't that be nice for gifts? If you actually made stationery out of fabric envelopes and that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to glue it up, which is pretty easy to do. I think in this case I'm going to use the Fabrifix um, clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Um, it is a good glue. I put it in a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle so it stores better. Okay, let me go a little closer. You can see how I'm going to seal this baby up. Okay, which is pretty easy to do. So I know this is coming in. It's going to be like that. Okay, so I'm going to I'm here. I'm going to put my finger there so I can remember. I'm going to glue this piece. Just a nice little thin stream. It doesn't take much. But, uh, and I guess I can do the same thing on this side. All right. All right, there we go. So now we're going to fold in our arms and we're going to fold up our bottom. Give it some nice creasing. You could use a bone folder here, but you don't have to. And uh, press, 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 press. And there you have a beautiful decorated um, envelope already. Look at look at this, the amazingness of this already. It's so cool. Um, okay, now, um, I mean, you could just take it from here and have more fun with it. So maybe what I will do is I will take a um, peg stamp. That might be nice. And if anybody's curious, I get mine from Nora Jane, N-O-R, Nancy, Nora Jane, N-O-R-A. J-A-N-E. Some people say I mumble it and they, they can't hear what I'm saying. Um, that's where I just happened to buy mine. And um, I have way too many. And I just bought a whole bunch more because that's that's what I do. <laughs> um, should I do? No, maybe I should do green. Okay, let's retreat. What are we going to do with that now? I'm going to put it somewhere. Well, I'm going to put you back here. I'm going to maybe make a little a faux stamp. How about that? Okay. There we go. Nothing wasted. There we go. Something in the corner there. Um, let's take green and let's do some green leaves. This might be fun. And the stamps have like a little line so you can tell which is right side up. So I'm just going to do in my peeled paint here. Now it might, okay, there. See, this is even on the shiny stuff and it's sticking or it's imprinting. Whether it dries and, or is easily wiped off, I don't know. But, uh, it looks cute right now, so I'm just going to roll with it. Like I said, you could spritz it with a little sealant if you want to be all fuss fuss. But uh, I think a lot of these things stick dry in, in space. Okay, there we go. We have a little of that. And then uh, um, maybe, just maybe, I will come in with the big gun, my Sharpie pen in fine Sharpie pen. And I'm just going to do a little faux so, a little faux so, just around here and there. Um, this pen will write on uh, paper and on fabric. So I'm just going to make it look like there was some stitching. With, with the fabric, I think it looks kind of cute. And uh, while the sewing machine is very fun and can add a lot to junk journal making, it's not mandatory. And if you don't have one or you're scared of it or you don't want to go that direction, it's just not your thing, you can still have fun and you can still have the illusion of sewing. Okay, so I'll just do a little few of these. Yeah, I'll just follow this around. Can you see? I'm probably off the screen somewhere. I'm gone down a rabbit hole somewhere, aren't I? Yep, usually that's what happens. Um, Sonny, are you still there? Oh yeah, he's still balled up in his little bed. Okay. Do you have anything to say, Sunny? I will. Just give me a second, please. I'm in hair and makeup. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He's face down, snoozing. Um, <laughs> see, it's so much easier to show Sunny's face than mine because, I'm, you know, I, could, I can just craft and I don't have to worry about getting ready for the camera and all that stuff. Blah. <laughs> I just want to craft. Um, you know, I just think that's more fun. Um... There we go. We're coming down. We're coming down the mountain. Yeah, I just, and you can keep going with this as far as you want to take it. You can do both sides. Oh, maybe we'll try that. See what that looks like. I didn't do the other side of this one. 
to go a bit back a little forth, back and forth a little bit. Okay, so we have a show. Oh, no, come to you. Oh, no, missed the button. Here, big chubby fingers here. Okay, that's what we got so far. Okay, so did I miss that side? No, it's there. Okay, back it up a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to come around here just to give it a little sense of completeness. Don't know why. It's a little slicker on the glued surface of the envelope, but you give it a little wiggle room. I think if you, you like squiggle your pen occasionally on some paper that it can grasp again, you'll, you'll get going again. So yeah, there we go. And you could use a, a more intense marker or something like that, a thicker one, if you wanted. Oh, my pen. Come on, pen. Sometimes you have to wake your pen back up. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't like this slick stuff. I don't know. Okay, come on. Come on, back. Come back to life, Mr. Marker. There we go. Okay. There we go. We can go back in and redo some that didn't go as much. It's all good. In the land of arts and crafts. Okay, now you could do the back too. Yeah, the roughness of the fabric will help pick up the sewing. This, of course, is all optional. But these are thin things that you can do that don't add bulk to your envelopes, which makes them easy to pop back into a junk journal. Yeah, how cute is that, right? Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, close up so you can see. That's what I'm doing. See that? Pretty cute, huh? Okay, back it up. Maybe just finish this little guy. Wait, are we on time? Oh yeah, okay, we'll finish this. We'll be done real soon. Okay, just mark these little guys around. I'm doing longer, longer stitches so I can get done faster, so I can show you how we're gonna decorate this little guy, which is also very fun. You can do a few more things and then we'll put some tuckables in here and display them so that you can uh, see what you like. And uh, you can, um, okay. So that's what we have. And I would probably go around and do here just for completeness, but we're just gonna move on back to this one. And just a quick look back at prototype. Um, here is one, we put some very pretty lace on it. And, um, but I think on this one, I'm gonna use some lace. This is very thin lace, which really works well here. Um, and I might put that here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Okay, so I did use um, Scotch Grape glue stick to do that. So let's just see how I did that. I just did that. I took it to the center and I put some glue down. I'm trying to be away from the fake stitch marks because I want the fake stitch marks to show. But if you cover them, that's okay too. All right. And then we just simply, there's always a right and a wrong side and I can never figure out which is which. Because I don't have my glasses on, that's why. Okay, let's just truth be told here. Okay. Stitches showing, coming off the end. Okay, that's right. About the middle. There we go. And then off the side. You can leave a little extra off the side or take it flush. Whatever your style choice is, that's all good. We'll come over here and this one. Should mirror that one pretty well. We'll get it close together here in the center point, showing my little stitches. Okay. And a trim. Boop. There we go. All right. And maybe a little focal point of excitement and intrigue and who knows what not in the center there. I've got these pretty little flat back pearls. These are just adorable. What's that guy doing in here? He doesn't belong. But, um, you know how it goes. They just jump in sometimes here, put you away elsewhere. But I've got these guys and I think that might be kind of cute. But there, that's pretty, isn't it? I don't know, it's just like a nice little subtle touch. And you could use a, a flatter one than this, but yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, it's probably a good idea and, um, to use some Fabrifix glue on this little guy. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, and we'll just put you down. And there we go. All right, isn't that cute? That's just so cute, right? And you can put words and stuff and, and just go to town and do more decorating. Um, but I wanted to show you the little idea with the uh, paper clip to pull your ideas 
um, your little collectibles together. Um, you don't have to have fancy stuff to put in these things. Um, you can use book pages and magazines and things like that. Uh, but I just have a little collection of fun things here I thought might be fun to put in. And here's an old uh, prescription from somebody's. And I thought maybe we'd put that in there. That's kind of fun to find. And then here is, um, this is one of my digi kits. This is from German Ads. German magazine, German ads, something like that. So if you don't have old stuff, you can always use DigiKits or uh, printables for those. If you want those, you don't have to use those. But, um, and here is another DigiKit. I think this is from, don't quote me, I've got a few, so I might get it wrong, but I'm going to guess blue vintage theme. Okay, I could be wrong, but that makes a nice little add-on in there. I thought the color would pop. Maybe if I had a green one, it might be better. Oh, here's a green one. Um, and here is, uh, which way does it go? It goes that way. Okay, so here is some green, maybe playing off the green. And then if uh, you don't have, oh, where's that central thing? Uh, let's see, what did I use here? I used an old photograph of some beautiful little girls. Thank you very much. That was a gift, and you know who you are. And um, an old um, uh, library card. And um, so this one, maybe... You could do a little fan design. But let's say you don't have a picture. Maybe you can use a DigiKit for a picture because of, there's some photos out there that you can you can use which um, will work well. So here, I'm just going to paper clip those together so they all sit nicey nice. And you can fan them out a little bit more. And then if you're if your pa paper clip show, you just tuck it down lower. There. So and there it is, and it gives you that, that nice fan display. Mhm. Mm and uh, that way somebody can just pop it out, and they pop it right back in. It looks all beautiful. Yeah. So I hope you liked that. I hope you had fun. This was really fun for me to make with you guys. Let me move this little lovely away. Cap my stuff. And oh, you got something to say? I haven't thought of a thing, actually. I don't know what. Okay. Why don't you tell them about how your morning went this morning? Because it was quite a morning. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's your little sheepish boy. All right. So here's the two that we made. Or here's the two. Here's the prototype and the one that we made. Um... So you can put playing cards, you can put tickets, I mean, all sorts of fun things in here. Um, yeah, we go. That's what, oh, no, we're going to have to put that up higher because we got to put a little Foo Face in here. All right, let me go get little Foo Face. All right, are you coming? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, are you going to tell the whole story? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell the whole story. Okay, now don't leave anything out. Okay. Okay, I'm going to the whole story. Here we go. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, I can't tell. Oh, here I am. Hello, everybody. It's sunshine. Hi, I hope you're having a fun crafty day. Everything is just dandy over here. And okay, so this is this is how it went down. Yeah, oh, I got up and dad took me for a walk. We went for a mile. We went for the, okay, I'm falling asleep. We went to the park and he brought me home and for some reason I wasn't tired at all. I was all fired up. I just wanted to play fetch nonstop with mom for hours. And even though she attempted to um, tire me out with lots of fun fetch play. I had more energy than mom. <laughs> yes, you did. So what did what did mom try? Well, okay, mom tried. I have to get myself organized. Mom tried um, my toys. We played fetch with my toys for quite a while, and then um, I started tearing apart her papers that I could reach in the craft room, and uh, she wasn't too happy about that. So she figured we needed more fetch time because I still had energy. So she defaulted to a water bottle, which worked for quite a while. Yeah, I really like the water bottle. It makes a lot of crunchy sound, and it's it's just dandy when she's recording. Whoops, I'm left. I'm like, okay, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and, um, okay, okay, I'm getting comfortable. Um, and then I carried on, and I came back and ate more papers. So Mom pulled out the Cheerios. Yeah, she threw some Cheerios across the floor, and I went and I ate all of them. Every last one, I hunted them all down, and it was wonderful. There may have also been a sweet pea involved and a milk bone. I'm just saying, it could happen. It could happen to anyone. All right, there you go. That was the morning. See ya. Have happy, crafty fun. <laughs> okay, thank you, sunshine. Yeah, that was pretty much the morning. Um, but, you know, they're fun interruptions, you know. <laughs> I mean, like, let, let those be my biggest interruptions of the day. Um, Okay, so uh, I have other interruptions, I promise you, <laughs> but those are, those are the fun ones. Um, okay, so I hope you're having fun. I hope you uh, are inspired by this fun little fabric um, 
envelope project. Very easy, very fun, very cute to put in your junk journals. And um, I would just paper clip them in, um, or you could glue down the back right to a page and do it that way and use it as a pocket. Um, uh, but a lot of fun. So if you are new, uh, welcome. If you've been here a while, thanks. And I love, I love knowing that we're all hanging out together, having fun with our, our paper passions. Um, if you're unaware, um, my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. They cover um, junk journals, paper crafting, life of a crafter, answering your crafty questions. My new material comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I also put up some video podcasts on other days of the week randomly. Um, they're all free to listen to if you have Apple or Spotify, or if you don't, you can just click on the link below or go to anchor.fm, and just uh, you can just Google uh, Paper Outpost Podcast, and the links will come up too as well. I'm in the fourth season, um, so lots of podcasts to listen to. And also, I have a free monthly email newsletter. Hey, 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 if you have not signed up for the free monthly email newsletter, it's Today is your day. Uh, why? Because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you, it comes in Word and PDF format, and you can change the words and change everything about it and make it your own or just use it as is. I tuck them into the front of my junk journals to help explain what on earth I just gave somebody. And also... Um, um, you get uh, junk journal tips, note from the bookmaker, checklist of supplies, and now I have added the page ideas list. So that is now that is now located at the bottom of the newsletter in the freebie section. So you're going to find a bunch of freebie things in there, and now it it, it is it is its new home. So if you're looking for that list, and I've just started, um, I'm not sure if it comes. It should probably be already started when you see this video. Um, a new little series, never ending um, page ideas for your junk journals, and it works on the concept of taking one idea and morphing it three or four different ways, and you can use it throughout your junk journal to help give you. Um, Never endless ideas to decorate a junk journal page. And I also, I did that because I only got through about a quarter of the list when we decorated our junk journal together. Um, but there was still a lot on the list. And I thought, if you're going to see these words, you not, may not know what they mean. So I thought I'd do some videos showing you examples of all the things on the list. Okay. And uh, uh, so that will be a short mini series covering a few of those ideas. What other updates? Um, <clears throat> Let's see, I have um, an Etsy shop where I occasionally sell fully uh, flushed out chunky monkey junk journals, a junk journal, um, um, let me back this up here, I feel like I have a weird viewage, oh that's really close, okay, there we go. Um, I have uh, junk journal bundles occasionally for sale when they're available. I have um, uh, vintage digikits, which are printables. That's uh, you, you purchase the computer files from me and then you save them. They're always saved for you eternally on Etsy. You can print them out as many times as you want and then you can um, use them in your artwork any way you like. And uh, what else have we got there? Fundals. Uh, if you like old papers, authentic papers, old antique, vintage postcards, receipts, old ledger, uh, prescriptions, things like that, along with very interesting book pages and some hand dyed papers. I sell those in packs of 100. They're called fundals with an F. <laughs> and um, uh, I uh, pack those up and mail those to you. So that's a great way if you've never had the opportunity or you don't find it that easy to find the stuff or when you find the stuff it's too expensive or you have no room to store the stuff, which I completely understand. Um, this is a nice way to get a nice collection easily, uh, a good variety too. You're going to find a good variety in there um, so you can really uh, hunker down and feel the papers and see what you like. And um, what else is else in there? Oh, I have a print and mail service. Let's say, hey, you really like the DigiKit idea, but you just don't have a printer at home or you didn't have the, the paper or anything like that, and, but you really want to play with the digis. Um, I have a print and mail service. So all you do is you order the print and mail option um, and then you send me a list of 10 DigiKit's names that you want. And you only need to send the first two or three words of the name. I have some that are similar, so just don't put butterflies. I have like 15 butterflies, something like that. So, um, uh, But just go ahead and send me the list to pam at thepaperoutpost.com, which is my email address. Or you can just send the list in Etsy, uh, Etsy message. Here's my list. Here's the ones I want. And Or if you're unsure, say surprise me. Or if you're like, hey, I really like birds and butterflies. Or, hey, I really like vintage and Victorian. Uh, you can give me themes and I can curate a special portfolio just for you but you will get 50 pages printed and um, my regular digi kits um, they're designed to be easily cut out on pages let me show you one 
And uh, for example, here's one. Uh, they're designed to be easily uh, cut out, and you can use these for pockets or cards or uh, tucks or uh, journal cards or um, uh, bookmarks or whatever you have, flaps. I mean, they're very uh, easy to use with the 110-pound um, um, lightweight copy um, cardstock that I print them on. Now, I have started a new series called the Signature Pages. Now, these are actually to be used for your main pages in your books that they should be easily able to be written on. So, they, I will, if you choose the print and mail option, I will print those out on copy paper, but I will print those out front and back. So, if I can show you an example of, okay. So here's an example of Butterfly Oasis, and it, it, they're softer, lighter, so that you can easily write on them, but I do print them out front and back, and that way um, they're easy to use in your junk journal. You've got a couple pages already handled, or if you're doing a themed journal, that might be a good thing if you're doing a butterfly journal, or I think I have Dragonfly Garden, which is a pink-brown theme, and I have um, Butterfly Oasis, which is a blue green theme and then I have some more coming out soon too so stay tuned and da, 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 I have a Facebook group we're having fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos so um, thank you very much for putting up your stuff there or just um, commenting or lurking you're all welcome and um, uh, I have um, changed the weekly uh, challenges a little bit so right now I'm running a one two three go a series of challenges where I give you three things and I just say go forth and make and create with reckless abandon and let's see what you make and people are really seeming to enjoy that one so um, I'm going to keep that going for a little bit and uh, um, so those are a lot of fun they really tickle your own imagination and creativity to see what you can come up with and uh, it doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be intricate you get it's just about having fun so if you want to join in some of those just for fun or see what other people are making come check those out and uh, that's the Paper Outpost fa Facebook group. And you should be able to find that easily on Google or on Facebook. And there's the link down below. And what else have I got? I've got till so. Uh, all my links are in the description box down below. And if you're on your phone, just touch the title of the video and that should open up the description box. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And um, on TikTok as well. And um, I also have a merchandise shop. So if you're looking for really cool sweatshirts, zip hoodies, T-shirts, mugs, um, totes, you name it, um, with Create with Reckless Abandon or, um, or the Paper Outpost on it, you might find something there. And uh, remember, most of all, that fun can be simple. And Create with Reckless Abandon, everybody. Go have some fun today. All right, take care. Bye-bye.